Hi guys and welcome back to episode 10 of my stitching podcast. If you are a new viewer here then hello and welcome, thank you for checking me out. I think I have had quite a few um, new viewers from my Festival of Quilts video so I really appreciate all the love and just the beautiful comments that was on that video, that was amazing to look at. Um, so my name's Rachel, like I said, I live in the West Midlands in the UK and I make videos about um, hand stitching, English paper piecing or applique and also uh, a little bit of knitting and crochet thrown in there. I do do machine stitching um, but it's not my main love so to speak. So in this video I'll be showing you what I've been making at the moment which is some English paper piecing. I'm actually working on my very first pattern which will be releasing in a couple of weeks, fingers crossed. And also I'll be showing you um, some other bits of hand sewing that I've been doing and a pair of knitted socks. And then at the very end I'll be showing you the purchases that I made from the Festival of Quilts. So if any of those subjects interest you more than the others, you can skip along on the time bar on the video and it will take you straight to the start of that section. So let's start then. So we'll start with the English paper piecing that I've been doing. And this is a pattern that I've created um, myself. And this is the first time that I'm stitching it out. And it's a pumpkin. I've just got it pinned onto my ironing mat at the moment, but it's going to be made into a hexagon wall hanging. So you can see here, I've just drawn out my hexagon. The hexagon shape will come with the pattern as well. So you can replicate that. And I've actually made the pumpkin three dimensional. So I'll talk to you about that in a moment, but it's all um, pieced together with lovely, autumnal tones and then we've got the stalk on the top and then I've hand appliqued it onto um, this background fabric. Now in hindsight I shouldn't have used this background fabric it's just like cheap poly cotton. Um, it has puckered a little bit I uh, don't know if it's quite picking it up very well on the video you can see it up here um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two lines of hand quilting around the pumpkin anyway when I've made the wall hanging so you probably won't notice that very much it'll be disguised in with the hand quilting. So to make this three dimensional what I did is I pinned the pumpkin onto the background fabric, I stitched halfway round, I think I got to about here so left an opening of couple of inches and then I've added some toy stuff in. Now the amount of toy stuff in that I have added is tiny you know normally you have to really pack stuff in there so I've added about this much which is a very small ball if I put it on the scales it doesn't even recognize how much it is and all I did was I smushed it out so it's turned into a very thin layer um, I did try and add more but it looked a bit too 3D and it depends on what you want or if you even want that at all. Um, so I just smoothed it all out and then just sort of pushed it in, laid it out again and then just carried on closing up the applique and um, yeah it's made that really nice puffy look. So if you guys are interested in this pattern um, do follow me on Instagram because I'll be sharing more of it there but I will also make a video once it's um, available to purchase. I just really like the puffiness, it feels really nice and when it's hanging on the wall it's going to add so much dimension. Now the next project that I've been working on is a hand sewn project. Now I bought these, I'll just put that down, I bought these templates from the Festival of Quilts and I was so excited I had to start straight away. So it is a quilt as you go pattern so look at everything is in there and it makes these um, wonderful rectangles they're two and a half by five inches and I'm going to be sewing them together in a brick formation so I also let me come over this side I also bought the templates to do the squares so every other row will have a square at the start and then the opposite ones will have a square at the finish so like here, 
but much bigger because I am going to try and make this into a quilt and that would go there like that oh, it could go uh, all the way over there like that I don't think it'll stay there I've just got them pinned into this polystyrene at the moment good little de <laughs> good little design board so this is some Tilda fabric that I've also purchased from the Festival of Quilts and this is a Moda Grunge I think it's called in the colourway cookie. I need to order some more of that because I only had half a metre. I've cut it all up and it's not going to make enough of course it's not. So these three here, I started quilting these um, with is it YLI hand thread I think that's what it's called something similar like that and it's very thick and stiff and I don't like the texture that it actually gives it gives it a ruffle and these have just been hand quilted with just the polyester thread that I've used to actually sew them together so let me give you a close-up look of one I think I had trouble with it focusing last time but anyway it's uh, applique stitched here and then on the back you can just about see that I've done just a line of hand quilting in the ditch just to give it a little bit more rigidity because it is five inches so um, that is the recommended width for quilting on my uh, batten. So I really like that. It's going to be a great way to use up scraps because what I'm using is I've got a bundle of scrap tilde. And then I also bought, I think it was 10 fat quarters from the Festival of Quilts. And that's, I just love that one. And I think you can um, make the quilt a little bit more vibrant because you've got this white sashing almost. I like to think of it as the bricks and then the white is the mortar. And you can get, I don't think I'd put those two next to each other, but you can get away with using more bold colours, I think, um, than you would normally. Even though, I just look at these and I love them all. I do, I love that print so much. So what I'm thinking, if any of you would be interested in a quick tutorial on how I made these um, rectangles, then I'm more than happy to do that. Because when I looked online, I was looking on Pinterest for ideas on um, layout and things like that. I didn't find much quilt as you go in shapes that wasn't hexagons. And there's so many. So this company that I purchased these from, I'll talk about them in my purchases, but their name is Daisy and Grace and they have so many wonderful templates for different shapes other than just hexagons. They do do hexagons. So I'll just show you the templates if you'll be able to see them. I might be able to on here. Oh there, oh, there you go. So the templates come in two parts. You've got the inside and then you've got the outside. So that's the rectangle. And then that is the inside is used to cut your inside fabric and your wadding and then this one is used to cut the um she calls it the binding so the binding on each unit and that's the square one i have got the inside it's just in my box somewhere so yeah they're so good look how thick they are they're really good quality as well and then the other um, project that I've completed, another completed project, if you're a long-standing viewer, you'll know that I have issues with completing <laughs> projects, but this is completed. I think I've got quite a few completed today, actually. Um, this, oh, this is a pattern that I, um, that I have been testing for Vintage Sewing Box. Um, she's releasing this gorgeous little cottage house pouch and I think in the pipeline she's got the big sewing case um, to be released as well. So it's EPP here with the clamshells and you, you applique these on. This is my wonky window. It's a wonky cottage. Sorry about that. Yes, cottages are always wonky. So it's designed to be a little 
um, case for maybe scissors, some spools of thread. I haven't got anything in there at the moment, but you can also use the inside to put your pins and it just closes with a snap closure. The fabrics that I used were thick. These vintage fabrics were quite were on the thicker side. So it has added a little bit of bulk here and there. It's really good, isn't it? So if you don't already, follow Emma, Vintage Sewing Box, or she will notify everyone there when this pattern is available to purchase. So if you're a long-standing viewer here, you'll know that I had a goal that I wanted to teach myself to knit socks, and I have. I have got my first pair. I wouldn't really call them a pair because one is one size and one is another size. <laughs> Uh, which one is it now? Let's have a look. So this one was my first one. You can see it ends on half a section of purple. And then this is the second one and it's a whole section bigger. Intentionally, this one was smaller than I thought. I had quite a lot of difficulty measuring they just say knit until it's the desired size so i measured my foot measured the knitting but i was obviously pulling it um so i knitted this one a whole extra 12 rows this is 50 rows in the foot and my first one was only 38 um which is probably well it is way too small it still fits don't get me wrong but the seam is like underneath my toe this fits perfect so 50 rows for the foot I'm usually a size 7 UK in the foot and I'm really pleased with, uh, I did have one extra stitch so it's a little bit thingy there but I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased with how the gusset come out. There's just a few on this side where it's laddered but it hasn't laddered as much as my first sock did. It's just laddered there so if you have any tips on how to reduce that i think it's just keeping your tension isn't it when you um do the decreases but it's quite hard it's hard to do that um yeah so i am super happy i kept the ball band i was uh, watching mrs d and she's kept her ball bands so here we go so this was west yorkshire spinners signature four ply in the colorway wood pigeon and I, re I started knitting these on holiday we was in Lanzarote me and my partner and one of the evenings we was walking down to the restaurant and um, we was walking through like not an alleyway but like a passageway and he says oh my god is that an owl I said no that's a pigeon <laughs> so I had already started these so then when I saw that there was called wood pigeon it made me laugh so these will remind me of our holiday um he thought it was an owl, I think, because where we live, um, we live in, not in the city centre, but in quite a built up urban area. And we've been hearing an owl, which is so unusual. You'd only get those in the countryside, really. We've been hearing an owl at the trees at the back of the house. And um, he thought the wood pigeon was an owl as well. So in terms of sock knitting, my lovely sister has made me this sock bag isn't it beautiful she only bought her sewing machine in march and she's already doing half square triangles she didn't know that that was half square triangles or it was a thing um she just got creative and made me this beautiful pouch and i've put on there a charm with a black dog which is very much like my dog and in here then so I've got all my needles and I'll show you the pocket that she added if I can manage so the pocket is a triangle a leftover triangle which is really good so in here I've got my next project I haven't started them yet um, because I've been doing the pumpkin and I wanted to prioritize that but I've got this Reggie um, I thought it was called Perfect Pair, but it's not. It's Perfect, as in it's a perfect pair, and it makes socks like this. I'm so sorry, the focus is terrible on this camera. 
but anyway it's got the cuff the heel and the toe already included so I thought it was going to be purple so I'm a bit disappointed that it's like a royal blue but if you look in there those are all the beautiful colours of the main sock. So this yellow, this just marks, so I've opened it and read the instructions that are inside the ball band. You cut off the yellow and then you just start knitting your cuff as normal. And when you see the yellow again, um, that's the start of the second ball. So in a sense, they'll make a perfect pair. I don't know how that works with different sized feet, but I will report back because I'm really interested in that. And that pair of socks I've just been knitting on the Knit Pro 9 inch circulars on 2.5 and seem to work out fine. I have been knitting the heel on DPNs because you have to use the small needle because you're knitting in the flat so you go back and forth on each needle as you would and it's really hard to knit on that tiny needle. So I just then transfer it onto DPNs and I've got these Knit Pro 2.5 again. I don't know if they're the right thing, but it works. It's worked for two socks. Now then, so I think the only thing I've got to show you now is my purchases. <laughs> Buckle up. Now, if you watched my video that I did before the Festival of Quilts, you'll know that I went on the Thursday to film and to do, give you all the tour, which I did. And then on the Friday, I was going again with my sister for the day. She'd never been before. She's recently into quilting, so she had no idea what to expect. And I'd promised her that on the Thursday, I would not buy anything. And I didn't. I was so impressed. So let's show you what I purchased. I, I've never had a jelly roll before, so I purchased this jelly roll. It's by Riley Blake, and it's called Flower Garden. Look at those colours. lovely isn't it so what I think I'm going to do with this is make a grandmother's garden quilt as soon as I got home my partner he pushed it up like that I was like what are you doing <laughs> yeah I've never had a jelly roll so this feels really special um, and I also bought oh sorry I just wrote to the camera the Fiskars extra large punch and this makes hexagons and so far I've been punching away on junk mail that comes through the door. I thought it would go through cardstock a little bit easier than it does. It barely goes through two, two layers of junk mail and these aren't particularly thick. These are like um, food leaflets that have been coming through. Just any old thing that comes through the door that has a little bit of strength to it, more than paper. So I'm going to use that along with the jelly roll. I think I'll do the traditional grandmother's garden where you do a, um, a rosette and then a plain. Because I think these will really speak, um, really like shine if I put a plain in between. Something really low volume of a neutral. Something even more low volume than that. Because, oh, maybe there's a... There's only a few whites, the rest are just, I just love the colours. They're very spring, aren't they? Now, I always try and buy things that are more pattern based um, because I've got a lot of fabric and I need to work through the fabric. But saying that, this I did buy a few kits, so um, going back on my own word. So I mean the Daisy and Grace, which is the shop that sells the quilt as you go templates. This is what they look like. So they come in bundles like this. You've got the template in the back, and this is an instruction guide on what patterns you can make and things. So I bought the two and a half inch square, the five inch square, and the five inch rectangle. So it's two and a half. So they all kind of will work together. But I bought the 5 inch because it's got quite a big surface area. I thought it would be really good to applique, maybe um, hexagon flowers, just to just have a nice surface where I can applique something. I think that would be really nice. So that's the square. The, the square 
inside is five inch rather than the finished thing i think the finished thing finishes at five and a half but this area so the, the gray there is five inch from my understanding i think so this was 16 pounds the smaller ones that i bought the small square i think was 11 and then i think the rectangle was 14 so they are on the pricey side but for such an innovative product i think they're worth it so like i said if you'd like to see a like a tutorial or a process video just let me know and then also from daisy and grace because she also sells epp bits and pieces i purchased um the pattern and the kit sorry about all the crinkling i've left everything in the packaging to make this beautiful clasp purse and it's got the wadding in i just loved it when she had it on her store i thought yes i need that um it was 28 pounds for the kit um but i loved it so sticking with epp um there's a lady there called so motion sew and i purchased to make flowers like this and this comes with 40 40 pieces to make that but as you know you can reuse them i also bought the papers to make this i hope you can see it i'll have to sort out the camera settings i am really sorry um so it makes like a wreath of flowers like that kind of like a sunflower um that is 60 pieces in there oh it makes enough to make three of those so it's really good and you can reuse the papers and i purchased a pattern for a pin cushion which is quite large it's sort of bigger than the palm of your hand so the pattern in there and the paper pieces she had kits with these but i couldn't decide on the colorway so i think i might do something like this because quite like that but she didn't have that in the kit form now um another pattern or kit that i was really excited was from a business called pincushion pantiles i think it is i think that's the location of where they are um it was to do it's called the dandelion quilt it's quite a basic quilt but all of this is hand pieced not english paper piece in hand pieced so it's got like a postage stamp section is this called a sawtooth star and then another row and she actually sells the acrylic templates to to do all of that and what i liked is this was quite expensive because you get a lot of templates in there but each element so to make these stars you actually make flying geese so in a sense there's flying geese templates in here there's uh, i think six six inch squares four inch squares one inch squares so there's lots of different templates in here that are versatile for other things but i love this that quilt the photo doesn't do it justice it was absolutely beautiful so more template more templates more um, patterns i bought a little kit from country folk to make a little rabbit and that is only sort of this high so I bought a few, um, I've never made any teddies or toys or anything before, sewn them or crocheted them. <laughs> um, I bought a few that are more advanced and I thought, oh, I'll get this. I think it was about £5. So she's a good starter. You can see by the size of the fabric how small she is. The, that's her dress fabric. I also bought this pattern, which is a house and it's a wall hanging. You put a rod through here and it says a quilter lives here they did have um kits for this but i wanted to um to use my own fabrics and i also got these gorgeous felt um christmas decorations and i will be i've got a kit for these i bought the fabrics and stuff it's just in my bag oops i've never done any um felt work like that before but i've done applique and things so i think i'll be fine i also bought the pattern to do this strawberry applique this is from i think a business called somerset patchwork they're actually an australian company 
and I'm not sure if it's machine applique or hand applique but I'll be doing it by hand and I thought that'd be really nice in Liberty but I don't know if I've got any red Liberty I'll have to have a look I know I did buy a lot now uh, this is my favorite purchase and I am so excited to make it this is Hannah the Hedgehog this is a kit and um, it's from Lily Rose Dolls or I'm not sure if their business is called Lily Rose Designs or Lily Rose Dolls but the website is Lily Rose Dolls and when you purchased that show offer was that you got another pattern half price so I chose Amber, Amber the Bear and I want to put those up on this little dresser behind me. So the pattern's £14.50 and the kit is £34.50. But you get everything in the kit apart from toy stuffing. So it is much nicer presented. I've uh, just annihilated it and ripped everything open. Oh. So you get all of her little accessories, I think her eyes and buttons are in there. And look at that hedgehog. Look at that hedgehog. I also saw the hedgehog for Cool Crafting and I did not think that hedgehog material even compared to this. Oh, it's got the pattern pieces on the back. And everything is labelled, look. So that's the dress, the dress bodice. Everything is labelled. How nice is that? She was such a wonderful lady as well. She was so friendly. And for the one that wasn't a kit, I thought, well, I best buy some eyes from her. And she had like this crumpled kind of trim. And that's for the tie for her bonnet. But I thought everything else I can probably pull from my stash. They have some amazing characters just her stand was beautiful so if you've watched my um tour of the festival you'll see um her stand it was beautiful so then i think that's pretty much everything that i've been working on so thank you guys so so much for watching and to all you new and existing um subscribers i really appreciate you and take care until i see you again